Every day the world is becoming darker and darker. Soon the Son of Man shall appear in glory and power, and the nations shall mourn with the sight of his coming. Are you ready for the return of the King of Kings and Lord of Lords? As the armies of darkness march towards global domination, many slumber as we approach the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us awake and announce his kingdom. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sound an alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is near. You are listening to Radio Redemption. And power! And power! Power! For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. 1 Corinthians 4.20 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Glory be to his name. Glory be to our Lord Jesus, who's sitting on the right hand of the Father. You are listening to Radio Redemption and Power, and we are a South Florida radio program that preaches the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And the topic of tonight's program is Peace I Leave With You. Peace I Leave With You. These are the very words of our Lord Jesus Christ, and we're going to be diving into what this means to receive the peace of God. Uh, we thank you for joining us tonight. Remember, you can visit our webpage, redemptionandpower.com. We have access to all of our podcasts, as well as our contact page where you can send us a message. Uh, you can also listen to our live radio that's on 24-7. Uh, we also invite you to write to us at redemptionandpower at gmail.com. You can also find us on our Facebook page, uh, where you can also send us any uh, messages through there. Uh, we also weekly post up our podcast on our Facebook page, as well as you can subscribe via iTunes for automatic downloads, or you can download the free app that is available both for Android and iPhone, absolutely free. So you can be able to hear our program on demand uh, whenever you want to. Uh, Brother Lewis, would you kindly lead us in prayer tonight? Amen. Father God, tonight, we thank you again for allowing us to be here, Lord. Tonight, we ask you, Lord, that you give us the ability, Father, to be able to declare your word. And also, Father, tonight, we want for you, Lord, to be able to open up our hearts, Father, so that we can be receptive, Father, to the teaching tonight. That while we go through these storms, we can have peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Once again, you're listening to Radio Redemption and Power. Oh, Jesus, meet me in this dark gun. Falling apart to leave me alone Lord, I believe I have my unbelief Jesus, I am so afraid of what I can see Be my peace and strength and 
courage to confront this day To see these intersections of grace Spirit come over me and fill this place Draw me into your grace Give me rest in my unrest I love you, Lord, but I confess Sometimes I may sink You are there to rescue me Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Tonight we are doing a study on the words of our Lord Jesus, peace I leave with you. Now in uh, working on this study, I came across some very interesting uh, statistics. And according uh, to the uh, mental health agency, 40 million adults in North America suffer from anxiety. And just so you have an idea of how great this number is, the state uh, with the greatest population in the U.S. is the state of California with approximately 38 million people. So about 40 million people, more than the population of the state of California, and the amount of people, suffer from anxiety. And this also explains why we have such a, a great dependence on medication in our society. Um, there are many people that are on all different types of drugs to be able to help them cope uh, with their circumstances. And also, with the growing tensions in the world, I believe that uh, these numbers will only increase. And the word anxiety is defined as a feeling of worry, nervousness, or unease, typically, typically about an imminent event or something with an uncertain outcome. Now we know that this is a constant issue for the world, but what about Christians? How do we as Christians overcome anxieties of the world? Or rather, how do we overcome anxiety all together? Now this is very important because the word of God is filled with so many promises towards us as Christians. And we're going to be looking specifically at this one that the Lord Jesus gives to us. And why is it that we as Christians should be reacting differently to the events that are going on in the world than the way that the world is? Uh, the world typically loses its mind. Um, we live in a society that is uh, filled with propaganda of fear to try to intimidate people to try and, and, and get them to go in towards a sort, certain direction, we know that one of the tactics of the devil is to 
instill fear in people. In fact, when the scripture tells us in the book of Peter that Satan is like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. He is like a roaring lion. And there is an aspect of this description that is supposed to be intimidating, supposed to try and instill fear into people and specifically Christians. And the way that we overcome anxiety and fear and nervousness is by receiving God's peace, by receiving God's peace. And we want to look at the verse where the Lord Jesus mentions these words. And he says this in John fourteen twenty seven. And this is what he says, it says John in John fourteen twenty seven. He says, peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. He says, this peace that I'm giving to you, it's not like the way that the world gives you. Don't be afraid. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let your heart be filled with anxiety. Don't be afraid. He says, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. Not only does Jesus here promise us and gives to us, peace, his peace. But the peace that he gives us is different than the way the world gives and offers peace. And this is very important. In fact, if you look up the term world peace, there's an actual definition for it. There's an actual explanation to what this concept is. And um, this is what I found. When you type in world peace, you just do a Google search, and and the first thing that comes up is a definition from Wikipedia, and this is what it says. It says, world peace, or peace on earth, is an ideal state of freedom, peace and happiness among and within all nations and people. This ideal of world nonviolence provides a basis for peoples and nations to willingly cooperate, either voluntary or by virtue of a system of of governance that prevents warfare. This is their definition of, of world peace. And it's very important for us to look at this in comparison to the peace that we're going to look at, the peace that God gives us. Now, some interesting points about their definition of world peace. Number one, it makes an emphasis on nonviolence. That's what they're moving towards, a world without any violence, without any aggression. And number two, that it will come about by persons and nations giving in voluntarily or by the enforcement of some government entity. Now, I, when we look at the world, the way the world really is, unless peoples and nations are willing to give up their sovereignty World peace must be established by force. And we know that this is the direction the world wants to go. We're seeing that in the spirit of the age. Uh, people want to, to, to build this uh, utopia where everything is perfect, where everybody gets along. And this is basically what defines the new world order. This is where they're going towards. And no one, who understands the concept of freedom will be willing to give up their sovereignty. No nation that understands or wants to rule itself will give up its sovereignty. So in order for them to be able to establish this utopian society, it must come about by force. And in, we've, we've in fact seen these things in a small scale. Uh, when you look at statistics, the places with the uh, lowest amount of murder are places like North Korea in Cuba. And that's because of the fear of being under a ruthless dictator. Now multiply that go globally. And that is precisely what the Bible tells us the devil will do when he establishes his global government. You look at places like North Korea, it is a place that they have absolutely no freedom to say anything that's on their mind, to be able to travel from here to there without having papers. It is a place where people are killed for any in any show of resistance or defiance.